Hi, good morning Year 10, this is Miss Dale. We're going to start a new topic which is C5 and it's all about energy changes in reactions. Um, it's a relatively short topic um, which is why we're going to do this before another one later on. Now you should have seen in the notebook that I have asked you to rag your PLC in column 1 and that will also show you how short this topic is. Okay, so in front of me, I have got four things on the PowerPoint. And I want you to think about which is the odd one out. I want you to think about it in terms of a reaction. So you can pause the video clip now and have a think about it. Right, now the odd one out, hopefully, that you got is this one here, the cool pack. And the reason it's the odd one out is because these other three, they're all chemical reactions, these give out heat. This one does not. It's the opposite. And it's these types of reactions that we're going to be focusing on. Now, we're looking at energy changes and there's going to be two key terms today. And those two key terms are exothermic reactions and endothermic reactions. So you have to remember the definitions for them. You will need to be able to describe how they are different and then you will need to be able to distinguish, that's tell the difference between these two reactions on the basis of temperature change alone. And as you can see that ramps up the grade from down there which is a far up to here which is approaching an 8. Now there's a key fact that you should know in that in chemical reactions energy is conserved just like you will have learned in physics that energy is conserved. Well it's the same in chemical reactions. The amount of energy in the universe at the end of a chemical reaction is the same as before the reaction takes place and it's this guy who said that which you've heard of Albert Einstein Energy cannot be created or destroyed. It only changes from one form to another. And again, you will have heard of that in physics. It's the same in chemistry. And also in chemistry, it's the same as regards atoms in a chemical reaction. It's the same at the start, the same at the end, which is why we need to balance equations. Now, I want you to really think that about how we know a chemical reaction has actually happened. Now there's a few clues here as to how we know a chemical reaction has happened. So there are three things that we can observe or measure that tells us a chemical reaction has happened. So if you want to pause the video and think about it, do so now. So in these reactions that you can see happening here, these two in particular, we can see a colour change. As a liquid's been added from a pipette, look, it's going like a orangey colour, like almost rusty here, so we've got a colour change. And the same is happening to this one cent piece here, it's going green. It's because it's got a lot of copper in it. So one indication a reaction has happened is we've got a colour change. Another one we can see in this image here we've got a metal reacting with acid and we can know it's reacting because of the bubbles we can see. So we say that it bubbles vigorously or it effervesces, that's a posh name for bubbling. And then the third change is something that we measure and that's the temperature change. And you can see that that reaction there, burning or combustion, is going to be hot. So those are the three signs a chemical reaction has happened. We either get a colour change, bubbles of a gas given off, or we get an energy change. And some reactions have all three of those. Some of them only would have one or two. Think about what happens in a chemical reaction. We mentioned about keeping the same atoms at the start as we have at the end. But something does change because they kind of rearrange themselves. So here we have some atoms at the start of a reaction and so we call these our reactants. So we've got magnesium metal and we've got iron oxide. 
iron oxide. Now, we were learning about displacement reactions and the reactivity series of metals before in C4. So magnesium is higher in reactivity than iron, which means that it will be able to displace in this reaction. But in order to do that, we have to break the bond that exists between the iron and the oxygen first. And breaking bonds requires an energy input. You've got to put energy in to break something. So if we're breaking the bonds, we need to put energy in. Then once we've broke them, we are re rearranging the atoms and we are forming some new products. So look at our products now. We've got magnesium oxide and we've got iron. So we've made new bonds between the magnesium and the oxygen. Now making bonds gives energy back out. So it gives us an output of energy. So if we knew the values of these, we would be able to tell how much energy we either got out of a reaction or how much energy we'd have to put in in total. More about that in a later lesson. Now, there are two key definitions you need to remember, and the two reactions associated with energy change are exothermic reactions, and that is one that transfers energy to the surroundings. So it gives energy out overall. And an example of that would be combustion, the posh name for burning. We know it gets hotter. Then we've got an endothermic reaction, and that's one that takes in energy from the surroundings. So an example of that is something called thermal decomposition. Now you can see that the two reactions are color coded. Why do you think that is? You can pause to have a think about that now. Now exothermic is red because it's going to transfer energy to the surroundings, that means that reaction is going to get hotter. It's going to heat up the surroundings, so the temperature is going to get hotter. Whereas the endothermic reaction is in blue, because if it's taking in energy from the surroundings, that reaction is going to get colder. Now to remember which is which reaction, you kind of have to break down the word. We've got exo and endo, but then the rest of the word in both cases is thermic. Anything to do with therm, like thermometer, thermal, is to do with a change of heat energy, a change of temperature, something to do with heat. Exo and endo are the prefixes, the starts of those words. Exo meaning to exit, endo meaning to enter. So we're saying here, heat energy exits the reaction and here, heat energy enters the reaction, hence their names. So they are key definitions. So in an exothermic reaction, just to summarize, energy is given out. Now the overall temperature of the surroundings will then increase. So you could measure it on a thermometer and it would show an increase in temperature. But in an endothermic reaction, energy is taken in. So the overall temperature of the surroundings measuring it will decrease and the thermometer shows a decrease in temperature. Now if we looked at this on a graph and on the y-axis we have the chemical energy, so literally the energy stored inside of the atoms, and then we start off always with reactants and we end up with products. Now it's the difference in energy between the reactants and products that makes it one of those types of reactions. So we get energy given out in this case because the amount of energy that was stored in the chemicals has now been given out to the surroundings, so there's less energy in the products. Whereas here, 
we have got more energy in the product so energy has been taken in by the atoms so which one A or B is exothermic or endothermic you can pause the video now and have a think we well, write this one's the exothermic energy is being given out and this one's the endothermic energy has been taken in to decide whether a chemical reaction is exothermic or endothermic you have to measure the temperature change that's the only way we can work it out so we'd get our reactants and we would measure the temperature of one of them before the reaction then we'd add the other reactant measure the temperature at the end of reaction and then we would work out the temperature difference if energy is being given out and it's exothermic the temperature will increase if energy has been taken in to the atoms then the energy to sorry the temperature will decrease so temperature decrease is endothermic temperature increase is exothermic now please go back to your notebook page and complete the tasks I've asked you to complete you can always watch the video and pause it at sections that might help you complete that bit